Every few years, a new arcade-style shooter comes out, and a chunk of the community goes on by saying it is the COD killer. It is the game that is finally going to give COD some competition, and it's going to do everything that Call of Duty wishes it could do, and do it better. This time around, that game is X Defiant, a new arcade shooter released by Ubisoft and has a lot of similarities to what you would expect out of a Call of Duty game. In this video, we're going to be discussing everything that X Defiant has to offer, seeing is it really a COD killer or just a game in the similar genre. So X Defiant, as I said, is an arcade style shooter, similar to any Call of Duty game, and it plays very similar to a Call of Duty game, and you have the modes and weapons that you would expect out of this type of game. Gameplay wise, I honestly really do enjoy X Defiant so far. The gunplay is, is really good. There's a variety of weapons that actually use their real life names, which a lot of people hate that COD doesn't do that anymore. It's just much easier to call a gun an ACR as opposed to Assault Rifle Delta, which is the MKXBD. Like, yeah. Having real gun names is beneficial in the sense of everyone knows it's an ACR or an M16. How about we just call it that? The game feels pretty good when you're playing. You got your sprinting, mantling, your sliding, all things that Call of Duty typically has. Though at times it doesn't feel as fluid as a Call of Duty game, but Call of Duty and the developers behind it have had years and years to be able to perfect their craft. They know exactly what they're doing, and that's why COD always feels good. Even in the years where Call of Duty is an not great game, the actual fluidity of the game is still very good. X Defiant feels very good, not exactly on par with Call of Duty, but you're not going to have a bad time playing it. It's not clunky and everything. My only main issue with the movement and everything is mantling seems to be kind of hit or miss. Like, there's definitely some areas on these maps where you would think you should be able to mantle this object, but you can't. It's not very clear as to what you can and can't mantle, at least based on what I would assume you should be able to mantle in this game. So keep that in mind. That's not a deal breaker, but it is something to, to bring up, that there are some objects you think you would be able to climb onto that you can't. But with all the maps and modes and guns and everything, I gotta say that the maps are genuinely fun and well-paced. On every single map I've played so far, it's been on a variety of different game modes. I've honestly enjoyed each of the maps. I haven't played a single map where I'm like, I just am not... A fan of this one and then it happens all the time in Call of Duty where I'm like ah crap I'm getting Santa Senio border crossing like I just I don't like this map it has not happened to me in X Defiant maybe the longer I play the game and the the more I learn the maps I'll come up with some clear favorites and ones I don't like but so far I've played every map at least once and I like them all I also enjoy the fact that all of the maps and characters are all based off of different Ubisoft IPs so some of the maps and people you can play as are based off of games like Far Cry or Ghost Recon and Watch Dogs. It lets Ubisoft and these developers utilize all these big name IPs so you can get some locations and characters that you're a little bit more familiar with or at least familiar with the games that they're from. And whatever character you pick also changes the announcer voice based on who you are. It's the little things like that that kind of show an attention to detail that I really enjoy. It's not like you're on a team, so the announcer's always going to be this one guy. No, it depends on what character you pick, and I really do enjoy that. Each of the characters all have different abilities, whether that be something you can toggle or a passive, and honestly, I don't know exactly how I feel about all of it yet. I never really liked it in Black Ops 3 and whatnot. I'm okay with, I guess, the modern Call of Duty Ultimate system because nothing's like a super overpowered thing where in this game, your ultimate ability can be something that's very powerful and very useful. You get something kind of like Widowmaker from Overwatch where you can see through walls or you get a shield that surrounds you and what is essentially a scatter gun that is devastating and kills people really quickly at close range. Everybody has a different ability different reasons that you want to use them. Same with their passives. Some players have more health, some people have incendiary rounds, so even if you die, there's a chance that if you hit them, they'll still die. I genuinely don't know how I feel about abilities yet. I guess I'm leaning more towards the I don't really care for them, 
but they're also not game breaking. But it also does change up the pace of the game because you know that when somebody's going to bring in their sonar ability and they're going to be able to see you through walls, you're going to have to change things up a little bit. But honestly, in terms of the ultimate abilities, you only really see them about once per game from each player. So it's not like Overwatch or the old Call of Duties where people get them four or five times a game. You don't get them all that quickly, all that often. You'll get the ultimate about once a game. The other abilities are on a recharge, but those ones aren't super overpowered. I'm okay with the ability that's basically on the left bumper. The ultimates, I, I really don't care for them. They're not the worst thing in the world. It's not going to make me not play the game, but I've just never really been a fan of ultimates in a lot of video games. One thing missing from this game is kill cams. You will never be able to see how exactly you died, whether that be from just the person who killed you or at the end of a game. There is no kill cams. You'll be able to see what gun they used because it's going to pop up in the kill feed, but if somebody's camping with a sniper and you have absolutely no idea where they are, you're never going to be able to tell where they are because there is no kill cam. And there's nothing at the end of the game that does like a play of the game or the final kill. It's the small things like that I would really enjoy in this game, being able to see who killed me, how they killed me, did they genuinely get the drop on me, like what were they using, what are their attachments, those little things can give you some indicators as to how good this player is, where they are, what are some strategies you can use, and then at the end of the game, a final kill cam or a play of the game is just beneficial because it kind of just shows off something cool that somebody did throughout the match as opposed to right now, the end of the game, all you see is who's the MVP of the match, who got the highest score, which is an incentive to do good in the game, but you don't really see anything cool. It's, oh, I unlocked this background for my character, I got 6,000 points and you didn't. I would really like the addition of a kill cam and kind of a play of the game system. Another negative thing about this game is the progression is very slow. Your actual career rank isn't that hard to rank up, just play the game, you're gonna get there. But things like your weapon level and your battle passes seem to really take forever. I think I played for about three or four hours in one sitting, and I ranked up maybe two or three times in the battle pass, and I got one weapon up to like level four or five, and all my other weapons are like level two, if I even used them, and I'm kind of going for the unlocks right now. It just feels like it takes forever to rank anything up, and I know there's a lot of other battle passes in games where it takes about an hour to get one unlock. It just has never been a... Uh, that's just never been a really good thing. That's just never been a positive in my eyes. I would like to be able to unlock things a little bit quicker. I'm not saying give me 10 levels every hour I play, but something to speed it up a little bit. Give us more of an incentive to continue to play. Give us some challenges that are going to speed up the progress of this. Give us some other things to work towards to help us level up faster in the battle pass or with weapons. Other than just, you sank an hour of time into game, here's one level. It does feel like it takes forever to rank a lot of things up in this game. And along with ranking up your weapons and everything, your weapon camos are kind of limited. So there's different ranks for your weapons. You get it up to like level 50, you'll get bronze, silver, and gold. But there's no other camos for that. There's no camo grind in terms of get headshots with the weapon, get long shots with the weapon. The grind is just use this gun for an eternity to rank it up a ton, which is gonna take forever, and that's how you get camos. I appreciate the fact that there is a camo grind, but when it's a camo grind of just utilize the weapon, not utilize the weapon in a way that shows you have some sort of skill because you need headshots, long shots, kills with or without attachments, give us some more options of things to work towards with these weapons other than just slowly grinding weapon levels to unlock the different camos or attachments for the weapon. There's no perks or score streaks in this game. So if you're coming into this game thinking it's a Call of Duty clone completely, you're going to be wrong because there is no kill streaks or score streaks. So if you go on a five kill streak, there is nothing special you get to call in. Something will pop up on your screen stating that you're on a kill streak, but you get nothing extra other than some XP. Same thing with perks. Your perks are basically your passive abilities. There's nothing new you can equip. You can't go into your creative class system and equip something that's going to make you reload faster. You're set with whatever your character has in terms of their one passive ability. What I really enjoy though is that you unlock different things through gameplay and not just level. Now, 
attachments for weapons are unlocked via weapon level, but getting different equipment items and weapons are unlocked by using weapons in that class and doing weapon specific challenges with those. So if you want the second marksman rifle, you have to get long shots with the first marksman rifle. It's not simply just rank up to level 50, you unlock this gun. I do really enjoy that about this game. Again, it's something to work towards. It makes you use a variety of different weapons just to unlock absolutely everything. It's not just, ah, I'm a level 50, I have the Desert Eagle now. No, you had to use the pistols in order to unlock the other pistols. I really enjoy that. So there is some really redeeming things about this game. The weapon leveling can be very annoying, but also the game does make you go outside of your comfort zone a little bit if you will want to unlock all the other weapons in the game. The gunsmith is very good, again, similar to what we have in Modern Call of Duty. Bunch of different attachments, optics, things of that nature. I'm not going to go super in-depth into that, but however you want to tool your gun, there are attachments there to do that, so you're not simply just walking in with an ACR. You can kit out your ACR to play how you want to play. One of the highlights of X Defiant, something that a lot of people are talking about, which I think some people would consider a selling point, is that there is no skill-based matchmaking, or at least if there is in core modes, it's very light. So that's something that developers have really honed in on and have really doubled down on their marketing, is if you're just playing casually, there's not going to be skill-based matchmaking, or at least not heavy, strict skill-based matchmaking, so it really just makes it an even playing field for absolutely everybody. Even playing field in the sense of there's a chance that somebody really good is going to be on the other team, but there's also a chance that you might be the one that is very good and you can stomp some people. There is skill-based matchmaking in the game, though it's going to be turned up only in the ranked modes. That's something I honestly kind of enjoy while I acknowledge that skill-based matchmaking exists in pretty much every game to some capacity. I do agree that it does feel like, especially in recent years of Call of Duty, that the skill-based matchmaking has been turned up to 11. Like, it feels like you'll have one good game, and you have to try your ass off for the next two hours, and you get maybe one to two fun games every couple hours, and then it's just a sweat fest. So, the addition of no strict skill-based matchmaking in core game modes is really enjoyable for someone like me who is a average to above average Call of Duty player. It means I can play this game and do relatively well, still feel like I'm having fun, but there is still some challenges in there, and if I really want to test myself, I'll just go and play the ranked mode. That's something a lot of people really seem to like. The casual people feel like they can just join in and do a casual game, because not everybody is at their exact same skill level. They don't have to try as hard. You can just kind of sit back, relax, and have fun in the casual modes of this game. And the final thing to talk about with X Defiant is the monetization system. Like every other live service game out there nowadays, there is a battle pass system. So consisting of free options and a paid option. As you rank up through the battle pass, you're going to unlock items whether you paid for them or not. And if you really want all of the items that you can obtain, you can purchase the battle pass and get all of those things. Different items that you could unlock could be some things for your weapons, different character skins, backgrounds, things of that nature. Doesn't appear to be anything pay to win. There is already a weapon in the battle pass, like an actual new weapon that you can only unlock through the battle pass. But like modern COD, it's low enough in the battle pass tiers that most people are going to be able to get it relatively easy and it's also in the free version of it so you don't need to pay to access the new weapon there is already characters that you could purchase with real world money but you could also earn them through in-game challenges but of course you're going to fast track that by just spending real money there's a lot of customization options here if you're really into like the mill sim sort of aspect a lot of these things aren't going to be for you. It kind of does what Call of Duty does, where there's a lot of vibrant things and outlandish things that you can purchase in the store. Keep that in mind. This game was never really marketed as being a super hyper-realistic milsim type game, but there are some outlandish things that you could purchase. It's a free game. Of course, there's going to be in-game items you can purchase. You don't have to spend money on it because none of them are game-breaking. It is all strictly cosmetic. Just know that it is there and that it is an option. All in all, X Defiant, for the few hours that I have played it, is a very enjoyable game. But we haven't really fully answered the question as to, is this game a COD killer? And the verdict is here, 
it's not a COD killer. And that was pretty evident because almost every single game that calls itself a COD killer or that communities call a COD killer never kills COD because COD doesn't die. Eventually, Call of Duty will fizzle out or at least cease to be what it is at this present moment, but Call of Duty's only real competition is Call of Duty. And even a Call of Duty that isn't good, see Vanguard for example, still crushes sales absolutely every year. So a game like X Defiant isn't going to kill COD, it is good for competition and it's a very fun game to play and I can see myself playing this for quite some time. But it's not a game that's going to dethrone Call of Duty, especially for a lot of the casual people, because Call of Duty is a very casual, friendly game. X Defiant has a lot of redeeming qualities about it, but also some things that it doesn't do as well as the seasoned developers of Call of Duty. I think X Defiant is definitely worth a shot. I can see myself and plenty of others having fun with it in time to come, especially given that as the seasons progress and I play the ranked mode a little bit more, but it's not a game that's going to dethrone Call of Duty by any means. I think the developers know it's not that, they're not calling it a COD killer, but the people in the communities that say this game's going to kill COD are completely wrong, because almost nothing can kill Call of Duty. Let me know what you guys think about X Defiant, have you played it, are you going to try it out? Let's continue this conversation down below. Thank you guys for sticking around and watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheerio, mates! Yeah.